Hello, everyone. I'm Si Zhezheng from Peking University. My advisor is Professor Liang. I'm here to share our work Flex Tensor with you, which is a framework for automatic schedule exploration and optimization of tensor computations. We used to say, computing is everywhere. Computing happens when the camera recognizes who you are, when you are searching news from the internet, and when you are sitting in a car with autopilot. We also say that we are in the golden area of artificial intelligence. The time witnesses the birth of numerous deep learning networks, including AlexNet, Yulu, and BERT. All these applications are mainly composed of tensor computations. A tensor is a multidimensional array, and a tensor computation is an operation among tensors, such as jam, convolution, and so on. On the other hand, Postmo array brings us heterogeneous system. A heterogeneous system is a system with different computing devices, including CPU, GPU, and FPGA. Different hardware varies in architecture, programming model, and optimization. Deploying applications on heterogeneous system presents huge challenges to programmers, which requires expertise in different hardware. It's hard for just one programmer to handle all the devices by himself. As a result, only by teamwork can they achieve the final task which should take a long time and huge effort. To fill the gap between hardware and application, many vendors provide highly optimized libraries. Typical libraries are QDN from NVIDIA, MKL and MKLDN from Inter. These libraries provide high-performance implementations of tensor computations and support the ecosystem of all the famous deep learning frameworks such as TensorFlow and PyTorch. But the problem is that these libraries are all hand-optimized, which means they need a long time to come into being, and they require lots of human efforts. As a result, they will fall far behind the rapid evolution of application and algorithms. In recent years, there has been a growing interest in leveraging high-level abstraction to describe tensor algorithms and employing tensor compilers to generate low-level implementations automatically. The compute description is a high-level description about algorithm, which is actually a mathematical expression. The scheduling is about how to optimize a program. It is written in primitives with parameters. On the right of the slide are some primitives. They have different semantics and different parameter settings. For example, the split primitive is used for loop partition, and it requires split factors as parameters. The reorder primitive is used for loop reordering, and it requires a new order of, as parameter. Here is an example that illustrates the idea of compute and schedule. From the compute description, we can get naive source code which is only a single for loop. And we can use scheduling to optimize the computation by adding some primitives. In this example, we use split for loop partition and unroll for loop unrolling. This is the resulting code, which is potentially more efficient than the naive one. With the compute and schedule, we can generate source code from high-level algorithm and optimization descriptions, which can largely relieve the problems of hand-optimized libraries. In fact, the workflow of hand-optimized libraries is from algorithm to optimization and to source code. All these stages require manual modification and test which may repeat hundreds of times. What's more, the stages are dependent on each other. Once one stage changes, the other stages have to change correspondingly. This requires the developers to have expertise in both algorithm and hardware. As a result, the whole development process may involve hundreds to thousands of engineers and take a very long time. The results are hardware-specific, not portable. By separating compute and scheduling, what we really do is to bring automation to source code generation. As shown in this figure, the last stage is handled by machine. This is a great improvement, but developers still have to handle algorithm and optimization. That is, writing compute and schedule. In this work, we point out that separating compute and scheduling is not enough because finding a good optimization choice can be full of challenge, which requires expertise in optimization, and the result is still hardware-specific. 
Here, we list the limitations of writing schedules. There are many different schedule primitives for different hardware. They can be combined in many different ways in different parameters. It's hard to tell which combination of primitives and the parameter setting is the best for one tensor computation on certain hardware. The developer has to search a huge data space manually, and the results are not portable. We did some experiments to show the difficulty in writing schedules. In the first figure, C2, C8, and C13 are 2D convolutions of different input scales. Schedule A, B, C differ in primitive combinations. This shows that different primitive combinations and even different input scales can result in different performance. The second figure shows the impact of schedule parameters. We use 2D convolution with the same primitive combination but different parameters on different hardware. We can see that the performance varies differently. From these examples, it's clear that writing an optimized schedule on heterogeneous system presents huge challenges for programmers. So we want a framework of more automation, which requires no manual optimization, less development time cost, and is more portable to new hardware. We want the programmers not to care about low-level programming and use a short time to complete tasks. Here, we introduce FlexTensor, a fully automatic schedule exploration and optimization framework for heterogeneous system. As the figure shows, FlexTensor brings automation to optimization level. Developers no longer need to write schedules manually. Hardware details are hidden from programmers so good portability can be achieved. With all concentrations focused on only algorithms. The key idea of FlexTensor is to leverage schedule space exploration to generate a schedule rather than writing a schedule by hand. We show that FlexTensor achieves all what we want. It uses automatic schedule exploration for optimization. It supports CPU, GPU, and FPG with high performance. It only needs compute description in Python. The development time is about from 10 minutes to one hour. FlexTensor is based on previous work of Highlight and TVM. It leverages the idea of compute and schedule from Highlight and the code generation support from TVM. The workflow of FlexTensor is composed of five components. The first, static analysis, takes the compute description as input and extracts statistical information and structural information from the description. The statistical and structural information is used by the second part to generate schedule space. Then the third part explores the schedule space and evaluates different schedule configurations. The final result of searching is a highly optimized schedule configuration, which is used to generate final schedules. And the last part generates source code according to the final schedule. In my presentation, I will focus on three components, the schedule space generation, the exploration, and the schedule generation. The key challenges of flex sensor are how to provide schedule for compute and how to guarantee high performance. We propose two solutions. The first is to enumerate possible schedule primitive combinations and parameter settings for given compute description. The second is to use effective exploration with heuristic and machine learning. For schedule space generation, we first use static analysis to get the statistical information as well as structural information. Statistical information includes loop trip counts, number of loops, loop order, and so on. Structural information includes computation graph structure, producer-consumer relationship, and so on. The information is used to enumerate possible primitive combinations and parameter settings. Different primitives such as split, welder, and fields are combined to produce possible schedule configurations, but this space is very large. We know that many points in the space are inferior, so we can print them out. So we apply three principles during enumeration in order to print the space. The principles are limit the depth of a primitive combination, print parameter space, and predetermine certain decisions for different hardware. After printing, we apply another technique called rearrangement to the space. The purpose is to make the space more easy to explore. The original space generated by the enumeration process is actually a linear list as is shown in this figure. 
such linear list is disorganized and provides little information for exploration. We don't know the relationship of neighboring points, so searching is hard to carry out. We notice that, in fact, many points have similar configurations with each other. We call such similarity structural similarity. If we can gather points with structural similarity together, we can potentially perform a more effective exploration. See this figure? We use similar color to represent similar configurations. If the linear list, we need eight steps to reach the optimal point, we can po possibly make it two steps after rearrangement of the space. This is because by gathering similar points together, we construct a higher dimensional space, which shortens the path from the starting point to the optimal point. Now we get the schedule space. How should we explore it? We want to know the correct starting point, which is near to the optimal point, and we want to know how to move from one point to another through the shortest path to optimal point. These questions are hard to answer by deterministic method. So we turn to random algorithms. We use heuristic method for choosing starting point and the machine learning method to tell us how to find the shortest path. Our algorithm needs evaluations of the point in the schedule space, that is the execution time of a certain schedule configuration. Our methodology is to directly run the schedule on target device and obtain the time cost for CPU, GPU, and we use a causal model to, for FPG because the long synthesis time of FPGA prevents us from profiling by running. In the following, I will explain our searching method in details. Our heuristic method is based on simulated annealing. During exploration, we record all the evaluated points, and our starting points are chosen from the evaluated point. One may choose the optimal point known as the starting point. This is the V star. But the risk is you may be trapped into local minimals. So we assign possibility to each point using such formula. The formula says the better a point is, the more possible it will be chosen as a starting point. But there is a chance that an inferior point is chosen. This gives the chances to escape from the local minimals and try new possibilities. We can also choose multiple starting points that is controlled by the user. On the other hand, we use machine learning methods to find good directions to search along. First, we discard points that has already been explored. In this example, Q4 is discarded because point 2 has already been evaluated. Then, we use DQ algorithm to predict the Q-value for each possible direction. The Q-value represents the quality of each direction. The larger Q value is, the better the direction is. So we choose the direction with the biggest Q value to search around. One may ask, how could the QQN algorithm know the quality of the different directions? This is the magic of machine learning. DQN algorithm uses a simple network to do the prediction. In our experiments, it's just a four-layer fully connected network. The output of the network is the Q value of each direction. Note that our schedule is of fixed dimensions, so the number of outputs is also fixed, but we may only use part of them. In this example, Q4 is not used because Q4 leads to a point that has already been evaluated. This network requires to be trained. We train the network during exploration process and use the Q values of evaluated points as training site. Our exploration process finally outputs an optimized schedule configuration. We need to generate real schedule according to such configuration. The schedule generation is customized for different hardware. For CPU, register blocking and vectorization are of critical importance. Register blocking are enabled through multi-level tiling. We use split and reorder primitives to do this. Vectorization is also applied to the innermost loop. The trip counts of the innermost loop are determined by split factors and tuned in the exploration phase. For GPU, block thread decomposition and the configuration of shared memory are important. Block and thread decomposition is reflected in split factors and implemented by multi-level tiling. For shared memory configuration, each block always loads data to shared memory before computation. 
The size of the shared memory used in each block is determined by the trip counts of inner loops, which are also tuned in during exploration. For FPG, we leverage a widely used three-stage cross-grained pipeline architecture to build tensor computation acceler accelerators. The three stages are data read, compute, and write. The DDR bandwidth, the on-chip memory buffer size, and the total size of transfer data determine the read-write schedules. And the schedule for compute stages is determined by DSP and BRAM resources. In our experiments, we use 12 different benchmarks. Most of them are variants of convolution, including group convolution, depth-wise convolution, and transposed convolution. They bear different computing and memory features. From each benchmark, we test several different input scales, and the final result is shown in the form of geometric mean performance speedup and absolute performance. Our baselines are MKLDN, QDN, and hand-optimized kernels. On GPU, we evaluated all the benchmarks. The baseline is PyTorch and QDN. We test the flex sensor on these three GPUs, NVIDIA V100, P100, and Titan X. In most cases, flex sensor achieved the best performance, and we can observe good speedup over QDN on all the three GPUs. Flex sensor achieves good speedup thanks to the exploration of huge schedule space for choosing proper schedule primitives and the parameters. We also use 2D convolution as a case study to show the performance of flex sensor on heterogeneous system. For GPU, we achieve average 1.5 times speedup over QDN. Flex sensor can dynamically adapt to different input shapes and search for proper schedules. The average absolute performance of flex sensor is more than 3.8 teflops. For CPU, the speedup is 1.72 times over MKLDN. 2K optimizations of flex sensor uses are multi-processing and vectorization. Besides, flex sensor uses NCHWC layout in experiments for high performance. For FPG, the baseline is hand-optimized OpenCL codes from Expert. The speedup is 1.5 times over baseline. The important factor to high performance is to solve the optimization problem under hardware constraints by exploring schedule space with guidance of cost model. We also compare to the state of the art. We use AutoTVM as baseline, which requires users to write high-quality schedule templates and perform parameter tuning to find final schedules. It is semi-automatic, in fact, and relies on XJBoost to learn a cost model. We compare to AutoTVM on several benchmarks, the overall speedup is 2.21 times over AutoTVM. What's more, we also compare the exploration time cost. Here we show the exploration time of three methods. The red one is our method with Q-learning, which is called Q-method. The blue one is our method without Q-learning for contrast. It is called P method. And the green one is auto TVM, which is our baseline. We can see auto TVM is faster than P method, and Q method is faster than both P method and auto TVM. Actually, in our experiments, Q method requires less than 30% of the time auto TVM to achieve similar performance. In conclusion, we design and implement a fully automatic optimization framework for scheduling exploration on heterogeneous system. We use heuristic and Q-learning to perform efficient exploration. We achieve high performance on CPU, GPU, and FPG. Our work is available on GitHub. That's all. Thank you.